go ahead. Give me. I want. I want to hear what you got. What you got? So I, well, hold on, because I. I mean, I, I ain't. I've, I've been. I've been really trying to figure this out. Cause... I want to get that out. You okay, baby? Uh. So I. I, I posed the. I, I posed the question like last week before our Bible study. Uh-huh. Um. Not before our Bible study. So last week when you were like, hey, let's uh, pick a word, and when you pick a word, dissect yeah. that. So yeah. I got. I got kind of deep, and then I. And then work picked up. <laughs> so I went back to our um, I went back to our study videos. And so when one person says they're trying to they're they're wanting uh, they're wanting to fulfill God's will for our life, especially as us as um, Israel, we want to make sure that we don't forfeit our inheritance. Yeah. And so in doing so, uh, you, one would begin to ask, OK, what is what is. How can we um, obtain our inheritance? Paul speaks about it, and uh, I don't have anybody here to reference scripture as well as you and Lewis do. Uh, so uh, he, he speaks about the the uh, att- well. You just spoke about it in your Bible study uh, the obtaining the obtaining the um, obtaining the 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 Ooh. inheritance. The reward of inheritance? Yes. So when I think about that, and you have what is you, you have his will, is that is his will of obtaining the inheritance that he has for us, is that synonymous with, with his with his commandments? And I was over a while I was like, well, is his will separate or di- any if anything different from the commandments that he's given us? And if so, then which leads me down, not rabbit hole, but just the, the yeah. depth of the study is now. Um, it's just, it, it's trying to, if there, if there's any distinction between the two, but yet if there isn't, then we go to, okay, we still follow the commandments, but at the same time, what does that look like in terms of, in the New Testament, when Paul's talking to the, uh, the different churches of Ephesus, uh, the Philippians and, and uh, the Galatians, not Galatians, uh, the different churches that he, that he visited to. So yeah, yeah, that's where we're at. Well, that's where well, we're at. well, I mean, look at the places in the scripture where it talks about his will. It says it is his will that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. So uh, why would you perish? Why would you perish? You would perish because you don't come to repentance. So what do you got to do? You got to repent and do what? To keep his commandments. Yes. Repetitive. So, so you can kind of see where, yeah, your thought is going down the right path, as far as just it, does his commandments and his will connect synonymous? Uh, are, are they equal? I'd have to keep studying it, but they are synonymous because if the commandment and the will, the what's his will? His will is none should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Why do you need to repent? So you don't perish. Mm-hmm. So how do you not perish? How do you what do you what's it mean to repent? It means to repent is to turn and start keeping his commandments. Yeah. So then how do you, how do you do that by also dying to your flesh? And then how do you die to your flesh by once you receive once you receive um once you receive uh, Yahweh shy into your life, then now you you're filled with the Spirit. Now that Spirit, so to 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 that point, would you say it's as it's as a continuum or the my favorite phrase is the plot thickens from yeah. just like when you accept when you accept Christ into your life, you know now you're now you're accepted into eternity with Him, mm-hmm. but there's also more that goes into that that someone that you know that you have to look into. So now you have His will. Is this will that none should perish? Okay, well then how do I not perish? So by accepting Christ into your life. Okay, bail. But yeah. there's more onto that. And and once you go into that route and once you accept that, now there's other things that you have to do that or that go in line. I, I kinda yeah, I kinda I, I kinda look at it this when you believe upon Christ, you because he calls it, he says, as newborn babes, right? Mm-hmm. Desiring the sincere milk of the word. But then he goes on and he says that you know you should be eating strong meat right and so when a baby is born 
think about when you first accept Christ. Um, can you, if can a can a baby rule? Can a baby be a ruler or a king? I guess in one sense he can, but he can't, right? Correct. And, and like in the scripture, he says that you're under governors and tutors until the time appointed of the Father. In other words. Like Christ, he okay. God the Father was the king, and he was the anointed. He's the one that's going to go. He's going to when he grows up. He's he's going to be the king of the earth. The son is going to rule over the earth. But he still had to grow up when he got to be twelve years old. I mean, his parents came back and found him in the temple, answering questions and doing all this stuff. He had to submit to his parents, and then. And then finally, when he was 30 years old, he went and get, got baptized and heaven opened up. He said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And that's when, and, you know, I could show you some other time, but that's when the father anointed, his, anointed him as the king. So at, at his baptism, he was the anointed king. That, that didn't mean he was the king of the world. It just means he was anointed, just like David was anointed. Yes, you remember, we received the oil. Yeah. Yeah, but Saul still was the king. So Satan's still the king of the world, but at the seventh trump, he says the kingdoms of this world are to come the kingdoms of Christ. And so for you to be a ruler, he's not he's not God's not gonna put believers millennium and in the in eternity. He's not gonna put you in a position of rulership. You don't know how to rule. If you don't know how to rule like him, yeah. so you don't know how to show mercy. You don't know how to show, show true judgment. You don't know how to show kindness. And so he looks at you as a child that he is trying to. You're under governors and tutors. So the trials you go through, the things you go through in your life, are setting you up. So when the, when Christ comes back in the millennial kingdom, he's going to give you a crown. And then you're going to get to sit down at a table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in 4,000 years while other believers, as sad as it is, other believers are in hell. You're going to be feasting. It's a party. You get, you're going to, you're going to have a thousand. And then when that first, when that thousand years is over and there's people probably going to come up out of hell that, you know, and there's going to be a lot of tears shed. And he's going to wipe away the tears. He's going to take away death. He's going to take away pain and sickness and all that stuff. He's going to start eternity. You're going to start eternity after that thousand years. Now, eternity, we all, we're living in eternity. But as far as eternal life, when he raises you back up, um, when those believers come up out of hell and they're raised back up, they're not going to have glory. They're not going to have crowns. Because you get your crowns, you get your glory right now. That's why I said to redeem the time. So that fear should that fear is what is supposed to motivate you to like take your eyes off this world and focus on the next world. Uh, not just the fear, because let's let's be honest. If you when your son's growing up, um, Jay, if you want him like if he's getting ready to do something bad. You want him to fear what you're going to do if you, yeah. you find out. <laughs> or, or if he does do something bad, he's going to fear. But you don't want him walking around in fear all the time. Yeah. If he's doing what if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, do you want him he to fear? Nothing you? to fear. He yeah, nothing he shouldn't have nothing to fear. So, so that's the way we should live our life. Now, when we have uh, when we when we get tempted and we're thinking about doing something we shouldn't do, or we've done something we shouldn't do, then we should fear. And um, and so my 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 entire thing is, it's it's really just a matter of taking your eyes off the world. And I, and I'm not saying that you can't work. And he says a man that don't take care of his family is worse than an infidel. So I'm not saying not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. What what did Job say when it, God took everything away from him? He said, "The Lord giveth, the Lord take." He understood that the Lord was doing it for a reason. He didn't understand, 
You know, should I not? He told his wife, should I not accept good as well as evil from the Lord? And, you know, your child, the first time you walk in and you see him and he's getting ready to touch a hot iron, you kind of like, get away, get away. Second time, get away, get away. One time you might go there and pop him on the hand, right? But this is how human beings are. He's going to touch that iron. Yeah, he's going to touch that. And, and, and let me ask you this. If you, let's say you walk into the room one day and, you know, you like, you've told him a hundred times. And are you evil if you sit there and say, you know what? I'm here. I'll take care of him. I'll protect him. I'm going to let him, if he wants to touch it, I'm going to let him touch it. See, some people think that when God allows things, bad things to happen to people, that, that that's not love. But 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 God know God knows us better than we know ourselves, and and anything that bad that does happen to, and I didn't I, I didn't I didn't understand this for years. But things that happen to you that are bad, um, you have to you got to understand whose hand they're coming from. The devil has no power to do anything that God has not. He told Joe he told him about Job. He said you can do this. But you can't do that. He do, he hasn't he doesn't have power to do anything on his own. He can't go rogue. If he could go rogue, you you might have to change the book of Revelation about a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but it's all it's already been it's already played out. God played out. So um, so my, I guess my point is keep your eye on the Lord, and He says. Uh, he says, don't be, you know, uh, don't be, uh, oh, what's the, what's, how's the verse go? Uh, when some strange thing happens to you, right? He says, don't, don't act, this is some strange thing. When the trial comes, this fiery trial comes on you, like oh, okay. it's, uh, like it come out of nowhere, right? Yeah. You know, it, they're going to happen. <laughs> Man, I had, this week for me was a rough week. Yeah. And, uh. And that's why and I had, asked. Family had your in prayers on that, man. I was yeah, that was and, and, was touching. And the Lord, and the Lord, whatever, whatever it was, He lifted it. And and uh, I mean, I felt like I was in a fog for about three or four days, and then just the next day, it was gone. But um, yeah, man, uh, I I I just like raise your raise your child in knowledge you know if if you can keep him out of if you can keep him out of public school i mean i hate you know i'm not saying don't socialize him with people i think you need to he needs to be around other people i i just you know i went to public school i turned out all right and i know lewis went to Same. public school you probably I mean, went I did too but it was also different each gen like each time your your public school was different when I was in public school. And yeah. now when my son and even um, Ruben's son, when he gets into public school, it's going to be completely different, completely different. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I moved out to Texas about two and a half years ago, I had driven a, I had driven a bus for the University of South Carolina for 15 years. And I was like, yeah, I guess I can drive, I'll, you know, and all these public schools were hiring and so I said, I'll try it. I lasted about two, two, three weeks. And um, I said, like, no, I can't because every day, literally every day, because we had walkie talkies and radios and they'd communicate. And mm -hmm. I, this, this last day before I, I left, um, I heard this lady, two high school boys were fighting on the back of her bus. I mean, sounded pretty rough, and and they're like, they're just, "Be patient, we got somebody on the way." But it was it was all, always something, right? There was always yeah. something. So I said, "You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna come back here and visit my sister." So I I came back here for about two weeks to visit, and I'd been back in South Carolina for like two or three days, and I was just slip. I was going through scrolling through some news articles, and I saw a, a school shooting that I had missed like two days ago. In that school? 
I pass by. I pass, That's a school I pass by every single day. It's the same school district. And um, and I'm like, and I the, that happened the day after I quit. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, okay, God, I, I get it. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I said, yeah, I saw. So, but um, yeah, just you know, raise your boy, man. Um, you only get one chance to raise them, and just make sure you do it right. And I, I honestly, I think, I think love, compassion, you know, um. Discipline should be about 10 or 15 percent. You know, um, I think you should be concentrating on, um, on letting him know you you, can't, you want your you want your child when they're going through something. To come to you. Mm-hmm. Not to their best friend, not to their not to the world, not to the world. You, you, they gotta, they gotta know that no matter what they've done, good or bad, no what matter that they can come and tell you, and not have to fear getting, you know, beaten half to death, you know, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or you know, any, or some t- other type of discipline. But I mean, but but I think you you want your child to be able to, to trust you. Yeah. So yes, I agree. Yeah, just um, just keep studying, Jay. I mean, uh, you know, I, I tell Dwayne and I and I and um, I tell Ruben the same thing. I say, man, y'all, you know, you and you and Dwayne are thirty four, and Ruben's twenty eight, I believe. And um, I'm gonna be gone. Y'all gonna be here a long time after I'm I'm gone. After Lewis is probably gone. So, uh, and the world ain't getting better. Yeah, it's not. Did you just go through that first Bible study on the? No, I'm not going to fourth one. Fourth, oh, fourth, fourth, fourth one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been going through one. I think I, I went through, I started last week after our conversation. I went through the first one. Yeah. And then I was yeah. trying, I was going through one while I was driving. Um, but for those Bible studies, it doesn't, it, it's, it's hard to retain. Because yeah. for me, studying wise, if we're going through a Bible study, hearing like when we go through our um, our bible study here that's yeah. one way but if, with, if i have the time to sit down and actually read and and cross-reference what i'm seeing on the screen what you're saying <laughs> and in my bible yeah. in front of me it's so much more um retainable so much more retainable yeah yeah and um you know, you know i think in that series especially because well i don't know i guess any time really yeah, because the to me, the entire point, is, and that's what I try to tell everybody is, what if I'm wrong? You know, if you're just sitting and listening, and you're not actually looking at the word and you're taking notes and you're you're coming up. With, because the more the more you get the scripture hit in your heart. When somebody says something. And you're going to know right away if it doesn't sound right. You're going to say, wait a second. Yeah, this, I've, uh... I, I I agree with you. I agree 100. There are some persons that I don't listen to anymore because they are things just things just aren't seeming right, and they're mixing they're utilizing scripture correctly, but they're yeah. imputing they're imputing a lot of emotions and um, psychological like psychological things into scripture, and it's like. Yeah, mm, you know, that's that's a good that's a good way to manipulate it because if, if, yeah, if you, I'm you listening to yeah. someone, go ahead. Yeah. No, I don't say you don't need to do that. <laughs> no, exactly. If I'm listening to somebody and they're then they start with, well, you know, I feel it's like nah, bro, wrong. You 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 had me at scripture, and then when you went to I feel, if yeah. you're to me when it comes to the inherent word of God, it, it's our feelings are our, our feelings come and go. Our heart is sick, uh, even as believe well before we believers, and even now our heart is deceptively wicked unless we unless we turned our heart to God. And that inner realm of you going off feeling and just you go mm-hmm. off feeling, and then you start to think, and then you start to in um like input like oh the feeling of this and psychologically of that, and you know 
you know, the mind and the body do this. That's cool and all, man. But it, it's easy. It's easy to start shifting more and more from what the scripture says and cross referencing the scripture with word and more word and more scripture. It's easy to kind of start there and then mm-hmm. like, all right, this is what the world says. So there's no way I there's no way you're going to tell me that I am. I'm now going to stand on a principle of what the world deciphers the word of God or inherently. That's not we're not going. If I need that, if I need that decipher, if I need mm-hmm. to get understanding and wisdom, any man that lack wisdom, let him ask of God. I'm I'm gonna ask him about what he said. I'm not gonna ask you about what he said, and then you give me this whole different translation or transliteration or whatever it may be. I, I think that's where all the denominations come from. Be honest with you. I agree. Uh, yeah, I agree. Because they, they base it upon, you know how many people say, well, I feel like God is like this, or I feel like God wouldn't do that. I mean, when it comes to the punishment of believers, the scripture's clear. Very clear. Very clear. So why can't believers see it? Well, one is they tr- they trusted a man to teach them, and they probably don't go home and read their Bible. Because if you were... It, it's all right because we let's be honest most people get saved in this country first place they go is they sit in one of those buildings oh yeah it ain't, and, it ain't get saved and then and then read the words getting saved i'm coming back to church see what he has to see what he has to say yes yeah, what he got to say and so um i hear people all the time tell me you know that, that they're talking to the devil and the devil's doing this and it's the devil's allowing this in their life and and um, in, not that not that he's not involved in it, but the de- it's no different with Job. If the devil comes to you and he's in your life doing something, right? He has to get permission. Yes. He has to get permission. And he says, and the scripture says, resist the devil. And he shall flee. It don't say sit there and have an argument and a fight with him. He says, even Michael durst not bring a relevant accusation against him. And so, uh, so, so God's character, listen, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about God. It doesn't matter. You know, I, you can think he's this way and I can think he's that way. Whatever the book says is what he's like. And the book says, I create good and I create evil. Now, it didn't say he's evil. On the just and on the unjust. He says all things work together for good, but he allows evil. And, and you could say, and, and somebody will say, well, if that's the case, I don't want nothing. Hey, you make sure if you don't want nothing to do with him, then that's fine. That's your choice. But, but that's not going to change who he is. That's what man, man, man thinks he knows what just and unjust is. And as long yeah. as we are in these bodies, warring with ourselves, with our flesh and our spirit, man, it's like there's, there, we're, we're already behind the eight ball. We can make, we, um, uh, what was that, that Paul that said, no man is righteous, not even one. Yeah. All, all look to, all look to have the, the desires of their heart. So, man, we, we like you yeah. can do the right thing. You can do the right thing if you wanted to. And then when you want, and then if you did, you'd be so self-righteous about it. Yeah, and then and, and the Lord's humbled me a few times for, for doing oh, that. So humble pie. Man, what are you oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um well, well it, it says in a place to who the Lord who the lo- who the Lord loves, he chastises. Yep. Yeah. The 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 Lord the Lord um chastens his children you know and if you hey if you're an unbeliever and you, know, you do what you want to do yeah go, go for it and everything but but um but as far as god's children i mean you know i mean you're you're not you're not going outside of your 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 home there and going down the you know down the street and whooping other people's children children yeah. <laughs> that's, not your, no. that's, not, that's not your that's not your responsibility so so i'm i don't know i'm i don't know what the lord i don't know what he's got planned for me i'm i know i'm going i'm going to the philippines in probably april for a while 
How long have you been gone? Huh? How long have you been gone? Uh, the plan is eight to ten months. Will we still have Will we still have study with you? Because I know you. Yeah, I remember yeah. you mentioned. No, I little, can. It's a little that. tough out there. Well, no. Um, so, like right now, in the Philippines, it is. It's eight. What time is it there for you? It's seven fifty-four. Yeah, seven fifty-four. Um, you're you're not eight, even an hour ahead, are you? Yeah, I'm an hour. I'm just an hour ahead. But the uh, in the Philippines, it's twelve to thirteen hours. So if it's 754, 854, it's 854, 954 in the morning in the Philippines. So, oh. so you know, and I get up, so it's not like the only difference would be doing the balsa is I'd be doing it in the morning, whereas it'd be nighttime here. So We're nighttime for us. Yep. So have you, have you, um, so what, what have you been studying? You've been studying anything? Just what you're talking about? What, 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 what what were, did you say you chose a word and started studying it? Yeah, so I, I chose, uh, what was more like a phrase, it was God's will. At first, what was yeah. that? At first I had chose, I know we said, we, we said Satan at first, but then I, because I was, uh, one of my favorite scriptures is Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And I was looking at the word supplication to actually submit mm -hmm. oneself humbly. And I was like, well, how do you submit yourself humbly? And then that's what led me over into, okay, oh, okay. Well, if I submit yeah. myself to him, then that means that I have to come to him humbly. Well, if I come to him humbly, I want to make sure as I come to him, as I as I come humbly, come meek, and pray with all earnesty mm -hmm. to do what he's called me to do. Well, then what's his will? Okay, well, if I do, and, and it just, yeah. it triggered from there, and then I went, just like you said would happen. I would yeah, start in one spot, and as yeah. I study, and I pray, and I sought, I mm -hmm. sought direction from the Most High, it went from here, went from supplication, to yeah. having a heart after the most high to his will and now to his will i'm going through the will mm -hmm. and commandments and how are they or are they are they synonymous are they different if they're different how they differ and then yeah. we had we we talked about it just earlier yeah his will yeah. that no man shall perish okay well how do we not mm -hmm. perish oh well we confess our life to christ and okay after we confess our life to christ and then 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 what more is it because it, it's not just we do that it's as you start to pull back the layers of scripture, you start to realize, yes, there's more you can do because there's more to be had. Like anyone yeah. can just, okay, I gave my life to Christ. I'm a born again Christian or whatnot. And then you out there still doing the same things you've been doing because you ain't pulled back the layers on, on what it means to live this life. Imagine, imagine because some of these modern churches, they, they tell people how to, you know, believe upon Christ, and and I'm sure a lot of people do. And but that's kind of like having a baby and not feeding them. Mm -hmm. You know, every week, you know, you're leading people to the Lord, but you're not. I mean, I mean, that's pretty cruel to go out and keep having children, and then don't don't feed them, don't give them milk, don't give them food. And uh, that's the way I kind of that's the way I kind of look. The modern church does is they just have. They have these children, and and now all these disciples, and nobody's nobody takes care of them. Nobody feeds them, and I think that's ultimately why people like me and you and Lewis, we sit in these churches for years and we don't get fed. We we, we have a desire. We want we want to be fed, and and then eventually it it leads to us being where we're at right now. You know, my fellowship right now is online. Mm -hmm. uh, about my Bible study, sometimes I'll somebody will call me and and want to talk about scripture or something. But um, yeah, but as far as a modern church is concerned, you know, I don't. I spent too many years in going there expecting to get fed, and the only thing I got fed was lies. So I think you have to be careful, you know, because even when you go there, even if you're like, oh, you know what, Aunt, you know, Aunt June asked me to come to church, and you know, so I'm I'm gonna go go with her, and you'll I'm telling you, man, you'll sit out there and you'll listen to what the guy says, and in your mind, because if you know the scripture, you'll be like, man, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. And uh, and you just 
you don't learn anything. You, if you didn't know those scriptures and say, that's not true, that's not, not true, that's not true, all you'd be doing is like sitting in front of a television. Oh. You you take it all in. And and the, 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 that's why Christ said, take heed what you hear. Because he says, it's not what comes out in the drought that defiles me. He said, well, what comes out of his mouth, right, is what defiles him. Well, it, where did it come from? The heart. How did it get there? Here and here, eyes and ears. And that's why it says, take heed what you hear, uh, take heed what you, you look at. And and um, and to me, I found out that when I go to go to churches, that's why I haven't been to one in so long. But when I go to them, um, um, I can't I can't I can't tolerate it. Um, I now I will go to one like when I go to the Philippines, if if. If they ask me to go to a church, a Baptist church, I don't care what kind of church, they go ask me to go and teach. I will. I only have one condition. You don't tell me what to teach. <laughs> <laughs> and they probably yeah, never teach, ask me. They they probably probably never ask me back, but <laughs> but I'm not I'm not taking I'm not gonna turn down an opportunity if you're gonna let me teach what I want to teach, I'm not gonna turn down an opportunity to, to get in front of a bunch of Christians and tell them the truth. Yeah. So but that's the only time that's the only time I'll go to a church building. So okay, last last time we went Oof. It's been a minute. Last time we went to, we went to, um, I was about to name drop. We went to a church in, over here in Irving. And it was, I mean, it, it's nice. Yeah. It's just, it, like, it, this, this was right around when we started fellowshipping. I think around this time we were, we were still meeting up. Me, you, Lewis, Lacey, and the other gentleman that I can Mike. Remember. Mike. So Mike. we were still, we were truly fellowshipping in person and exchanging scripture and thoughts and ideas uh based solely into the depth of scripture and so as i was going to this as i was going to that church there's just things it wasn't it was coming across as a story instead of teaching and yeah. teaching doesn't always teaching doesn't always attract stories attract teaching you have to be in a willingness to want to learn if you're not yeah. in a willingness to learn then how else can i grasp your attention it's teaching I mean, it's it's yeah. uh, it's storytelling. And that's why I look back at like um, when I'm on YouTube, because since I've since I've added you and um, uh, Kawazan, the gentleman that uh, Lewis yeah. introduced me to, Kazo, Kazo, Kazo 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 Wan. Wan. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, um, you know, YouTube is good on. Oh, okay, you like this, you'll like this. And every time something comes up, I give it that 30 second, 30 second window of what you're trying to say. If I haven't heard truth in 30 seconds, then then you're not speaking truth in that whole hour and some change. Yeah, I don't know. It's all entertaining, entertaining. How can I get you to either laugh? How can I get you to either provoke emotion and crying or laughter? And how can Mm -hmm. I keep your attention instead of, yo, I don't care if I laugh or cry. What's this truth talking about? Because if it's true truth. If it's if it's God's truth, it's going to convict my heart. So I'm going yeah. to be I'm going to already be like ah, either angry or, or upset. I don't need you to provoke yeah. that in what you think it does. I, I need you to come at this word and speak it for what it, what this says. Tell me mm-hmm. what that says. And when it convicts my heart, then yeah, then I, and yeah. it wasn't even you. It wasn't even you. But they don't want to. Oh no, man, they don't they don't want to do that. And so my wife was a very one of the church you went to, which is the other Mark and Lewis's old church that we used to go to. It's funny, my wife would always, she would always come home and like, I cannot remember a thing on what he told us. Yeah. It's just when she would not be able to retain anything that was said. And my wife yeah. takes notes, no yeah. notes. Yeah. We leave, we leave the sermon and she doesn't remember what it was all talked, what, what was said. She just has a scripture. It's like, nah. I, I'm telling you, um, learning, studying, understanding the scripture is only hard in the sense of making your calming your heart and your because you you're in the world all day, right? And your mind is mm-hmm. going, it's calming yourself down and just sitting in front of the book. And like I said, take take a word, take a phrase, and just look everywhere in the Bible where that's at. There's no way you can't learn something. 
Oh, there's, there's, there's you sit even down if you, five. even if you halfway do it, I agree with you. Even if yeah. you, even if you halfway are just, okay, I'm going to read yeah. this. I'm going to read this chapter. You halfway yeah. just, okay, so on, so on, so on, so on. Something is going to catch you. That spirit, his spirit is going to, hey, come, hey, look at this. Read, read that again. Or yeah. bring it, bring it, bring it to foreknowledge later on in that same chapter. But you can't just, you just got to do it. Yeah. Because I, 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 I remember, if if you remember when we were talking about the who the hundred forty four thousand was, there's this yeah, and I think I thought I mentioned this in the video, but anyway, I'll say it again. But there's this this Hebrew lady that and from England, and she she's like, have you? She says being very nonchalant, it's like could the could these hundred forty four thousand be these children that Herod killed, right? And I started thinking, I was like, man, I was like, man God, God had to give that to her. And I studied it for five minutes. I mean, I've been, and I've been searching for years, trying to figure out who it was. And she just like, and I mean, it just like, it didn't take a lot of study. It didn't take a lot of study. What I had done is I had this, like, I'm only going to be able to figure it out by looking in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But I might want to go back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but and the reality was it was sitting right there in like the second chapter of Matthew in the beginning of the New Testament, sitting right there in front of me, and I couldn't see it. And um, but that's what I, that's that's why I'm saying, man. If all you got to do, man, just pick a different word, just pick a word, and just start everywhere, and and what it'll do, it'll just the Lord will take you where He wants to take you. You might not even stay on that word, but you start with that word and you take you to the, another verse with that word in it. And then all of a sudden he'll, you'll connect those and he'll take us. I'm just telling you, that's why he says the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. He'll t you don't you don't start with you don't start the study trying to think um, not that you can't pick a topic and try to study it, but but. You can just pick a word and he'll show you a truth that you never thought about even studying. I can't I can't explain it. You know, I mean, you, if you know you, you in your mind, your spirit, you know, when you start studying that and then all of a sudden he shows you something. It's not it's him showing you it's him guiding you. And mm -hmm. and to me, it's it's a beautiful thing. And so. But you'll never ever have that if all you do is sit in front, sit, sit down in a pew and and listen to another man tell you what the truth is, and then give him money based upon the truth. Yeah. So I'm I'm like man Kazawan. Now, now I will say that Kazawan has a couple of things that I don't believe, and um, but the man studied. You yeah, he did. Yeah, he you did. can tell the the man was a he knew he was studied, and if he didn't have um, if, if he didn't have the view he had on white people, I would have reached out to him, tried to talk to him, um, but I just felt like he didn't he he was, and maybe he's he's been gone for a while. He hadn't made a video in a long time. A maybe. long time. I was about five eight years. The Lord, yeah, and that's see, eight years ago was when when I kind of started, and that and that's one of the he's one of the first ones I latched on to, and um, he showed me the truth about the giants. He showed me, um, I'm trying to think what else, the virgin birth, uh, the the truth about um, Ruth. Most people think Ruth is a Gentile. Have you watched that video? Mm -mm. Uh, if you want to see how well studied the man is, go watch his video on, on Ruth. I'm, I'm just telling you, if you want to see how detail detail that man studied, because that that's the most intricate, one of the most intric intricate studies I've ever seen in my entire life. How he proves that Ruth was an Israelite and not a Gentile. Because most people think she's a Gentile because she was a Moabitess. The Bible calls her a Moabitess. So people say she was a Gentile. 
I don't know. I don't know if more, um, I don't know if a lot of people are like this. I hate my voice when I hear it. Not so much when I'm talking, but when I hear my recording. Oh, hearing hear, hearing your playback of your voice. Yeah, yeah. Because I hear all the. I'm a very um, intricate, detailed person, right? I, I, I like details. I, that's why I like prophecy. And so when I hear myself speak and I'm stuttering and I'm mispronouncing words or, or something, stuff like that, it drives me crazy. Because I don't know if I wasn't me and I was listening to me, I don't know if I'd want to listen to me. <laughs> but I, mean, I will say this. I got a lot of fo- I got I got a quite quite a few followers who listen to me, so I guess they can tolerate me. I mean, you're also, I mean, if we're just going to be, we're going to be completely factual. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, when when someone is trying to, uh, when someone is trying to get clarification or get get clarity or find truth, um, it's easier to be misled by someone who who has a a, a very high vocabulary. Not saying you, but it's easy yeah. to be mis mis misled or skewed away by somebody who has a high vocabulary who who speaks very eloquently because it's just that's that's it's easy for them and you yeah, would trust the because the way they speak you would think oh okay they must know what they're talking about but they're see paul had, paul had that problem too yes he did paul paul like he said i'm not very eloquent in my speech right mm-hmm. and um i know that when i first started putting videos online jay Oh man, because of my mispronouncing words and stuttering and stuff like that, and I really didn't. I didn't want to do it. And you know what? You know what kept coming to my mind when Moses kept making excuses about going to yep. Pharaoh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and God was ready to like kill him, and he's like, "No, you know what? I'm gonna send Aaron with you. Aaron knows how to. He's he's got an eloquent. You know, he knows how to speak eloquently, and." Um, and so I'm like, you know what? I'll put him online. And for up until earlier this year, you wouldn't believe it. At the beginning of last year, I had 15 followers. And and don't get me wrong, I'm never going to be one of these people that have a lot of followers just because of what I teach. Mm-hmm. I met a dude that I feel like um, you would really, <laughs> really get along with. Um, like I said, I've been looking for like men that have that want to learn and that's seeking truth. And he's back in Florida, but so his time zone will probably work out better with y'all. And he's he's very knowledgeable. And we we spoke on a few things today, and I just think it was cool. Um, it it was it, the last two days have been a little difficult. I lost uh, power because of the snowstorm. Yeah, with an eight month old, <laughs> eight month old, and yeah. uh, one car right now, it was just a little. Yeah. But we got a fireplace, thank God. So even yeah. with the heater off, we were good. But the good thing is, I always leave the coffee pot on, so I was able to warm up his bottles, everything, yeah. and water was hot enough to last. So, yeah. but um, yeah, it's just. Man, I just walked through the snow and it was up to my thigh. <laughs> and I'm I'm five eleven and a half and it's like at my thigh right now. So Yeah. It's coming. Y'all get snow well, out there like y'all get snow like that out there? Man, this is my first time ever being in snow. So Oh. It's all new to me, but <laughs> this is how I gotta learn how to deal with it. I'm all for it, you know. It's either gonna be worse. If this is gonna be the worst, then it can't get any like you know when it's better it's gonna be easier but yeah. it taught me different ways to cope different ways to survive i grew up surviving man <laughs> big family you know we struggled so when we had no power i already had all the plan how we gonna get this done if we had to go for a long period of time i had my little rock stove ready just in case <laughs> hey, there we go you know what I'm yeah. but yeah, it, it was it was cool. Like I do think it is a blessing, though. Despite the, for most people, it'd be inconvenient. Like it's just giving me an opportunity to kind of expand my knowledge on what I know. Like yeah. I'm learning different ways to do different things. Learning how to drive in the snow. 
Yeah. It's like kind of learning how to drive again. You can't just hit the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's definitely cool, man. But yeah, like I said, I thank God because in the last two days, um, I'm I've been having some great conversations with people, and it's been on my heart to talk to my neighbor, this guy from California named Jr. And then, like, we've been getting real cool. So it's like I, I feel like I've been praying for God to give me a way or something, some kind of common ground to start, and like. We help each other out. Like my snowblower broke, and he just got this new souped up like Lamborghini version of the snow. <laughs> and <laughs> like we help each other out in that way. Like he let me use it. I'll just plow half his uh, driveway. It's like a little U. I'll do this half, and he'll do the other half before work. And now I got an extra snowblower until mine get fixed. So it's just like we just help each other out, and he don't even have a reason. We don't really know each other, but. I know he asked why, and I always kind of mention Christ once in a while. So I just pray for more of an opportunity to actually sit and talk to him. Yeah. But I met this guy named Kwame. Uh, he he he's awakened to the Hebrew oh, okay. uh, truth and everything. And I'm telling you, this guy um, very knowledgeable. Like it's crazy that I walked in on y'all talking about like people. That can that has like eloquent speech and they could say these words and yeah. some people got a good way with words and you don't whether they're speaking truth or not. It's like yeah. but the thing is, I can tell he's a highly intelligent dude, but scripture. Like that's all that like because that's how I am. It's like show me in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Show me in the say. Bible first. And he's he's one of those guys. So younger guy too, like 30s, 20s, 30s. But um, like I literally just met him, but the dude is definitely like we actually got a very similar <laughs> testimony of how we came to faith and everything. But it's just, you know, I got a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Do you believe he died and resurrected? Because I know there's people that believe they're Hebrews and they deny Christ now. So like there's a I've, I've been seeing a lot of them like they don't believe Jesus Christ like existed they think it's like the white guy's invention they, there's a sect what? of hebrews that yeah they believe that they believe only the old testament they think paul was a liar so i've been running into a lot of those lately i had to i had to delete one about oh, two weeks ago because you know he wouldn't comment on the he wouldn't comment on the videos he wasn't even watching the video he just wanted to bring his doctrine he's like paul was a, you know paul was a he was he was he was man he was he was throwing down on paul and then the yeah. estimate was all a lie and and i'm like you know i don't I, to me i have to i have to determine i have to determine who to spend my time with in other words i if you don't want to reason See, the Lord said, the Bible says, deliver me from unreasonable people, right? Mm. And so I'm of a, I'm a the belief that God kind of lets me know in my spirit whether I should sit there and waste time with someone. And um, and some of these people get on there and I'm like, dude, I don't, listen, I don't care if you comment. I don't care if you disagree. I said, but disagree, two, two qualifications. What's the video talking about? Tell me what you disagree about and give me the scripture. That, I mean, that, that, that's it. But if you want to just bring your doctrine to my, and, you, and you'll check them out, and, and they, don't have a, they don't have a YouTube page. It's like, if you're, so, if you're so sure, if this is your doctrine, and you're so wanting to get people to, don't come to my page, go start your own YouTube page. Yeah, I'm all about that, avoiding vain and foolish arguments. Like, yeah. the reason why I'm willing to discuss discuss anything with you guys is because it's like it's all just to learn you know but there's some people that they'll bring up a biblical topic and argue it just because they want to be right not because they want to know thoughts of the truth they want to sharpen each other up possibly make corrections like see where there's error but there's dudes out there man like they really don't believe jesus christ is the son of god and i'm like it's crazy because if you actually read the New Testament, there's a group of people just like you. <laughs> there's a group of people called Pharisees just like you. Yeah. Like all, they talk only about the law and 
the thing is, like, they think Paul is heretical because he says we're not justified by the law, but he's not telling you to break the law, but he's telling you your salvation is not the law. And those people believe, like, the law is going to be their salvation and everything. And I'm like, dude, if only you read the New Testament, you would see that it tells you exactly what you're doing. Like, it already said you're going to be doing what you're doing. Like, how do you predict that? I was just going to say, if you read through Romans 6 and 7, he tells you what the law is for. He tells you the, pur the, the purpose of the law. Well, if you offend in one point, right? He says you can keep the whole law and offend in one point. It means you're guilty. Uh, paraphrasing, that means if I catch you, if I'm a police and I catch you breaking into the house and you say, well, I didn't kill nobody. We're not arresting you for killing somebody. Well, I didn't do that. Well, we're not arresting you for that, right? You only got to, you break one of God's laws and you're guilty of all. And every one of us has done that. So the law is a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. It's to show you that you can't keep the law. That's why the law was there, so you because you can't keep it. Now, do I believe that once you're, you're a believer that you can keep it? Yeah. Now, it may take time, and you're, you're kind of like a child. You're growing up, right? But I, I believe that I believe that you can keep the whole law, and you know why? Because he says, to love the Lord thy God and to love thy neighbor as thyself, right? These mm -hmm. two commandments, and that's the, the whole, whole law, law is yep. fulfilled. And if you really think about the breakdown of the Ten Commandments, if you split it in half, it really is those two anyway. So it's like sins against your brother and then sins against God. And another thing is, uh, <laughs> one thing about the whole law thing is like, it's the whole thing is you're not going to perfectly keep it, but you should want to. Like, you should want to. Like, why wouldn't you? One of the first things you learn as a kid in Sunday school is, is the Ten Commandments. Thank you. One of the first things you learn is the Ten Commandments, and it's like, but then churches tend to teach like that, like they, the thing is, they teach as if the law has no relevance anymore, and it does, but the thing is, you're not like justified by it, but it still has relevance. God, Christ didn't come to do away with the law, he came to fulfill it, and I 100% agree with that, so it's not like he came and told you, do whatever you want to do now, like, you still have a standard of living. Yeah. 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 He said, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and not just that, the law is a light. It, you, 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 if you don't have the law, you're a blind man. You know, uh, if, if there, if I was driving down the road through a neighborhood doing, you know, or if I was driving down the road and I'm doing 70 and there's no speed limit sign, the police pulls me over. And I was like, well, there's no size. There's, there's no law. There's nothing here saying you can't. He can't. There's no you're not guilty of anything. Yeah. Now, once they, well, once they put the sign up and says this is the speed limit, then you're guilty of something. And yeah. that and that's why the law, the law, the law came 400 and years after the promise so so the the law the law was given because without the law sin's not imputed so anyway is so anyway the the law hasn't been done away with matter of fact i will tell you this the law is more strict because christ said because he's the king now when he got baptized, he became the king, and he, he, he told his own disciples, he says, if a man, instead of old time, if thou, thou, shalt, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say, if you look on a woman. Yeah, it's even plus, more. <laughs> so is, is that more strict? More strict and specific. And more specific, isn't it? And I think all Christ is trying to do is to let you know that your sin is is way deeper than what you think it is. He oh, wants man. to get it all. He wants so, to get it all. It's interesting that you brought up that up because one thing I think people tend to overlook because of the way that Eurocentric Christianity has presented a lot of things is the spiritual part of the of the faith. 
people tend to overlook a lot of the spiritual effects of sin. Like David's sons were cursed because of his sexual sin. And I think people tend to think like some of those things don't happen anymore. Like I like in my opinion, I, I do feel like I feel like the Christ came to like set the captive free and it says who the sun sets free is free indeed. So like bondage curses, but I've met people who been in church. I saw these people baptized and then a demon will manifest in them. Yeah. And uh, it's like easy to know because one of the people I know is a girl that I knew pretty well. Little girl, she's no taller than like five, five, two. And she was tossing grown men, like <laughs> tossing them. And the thing is like, she manifested and she the spirit spoke and said what caused it and she it was someone who had done something and it was from like a generational thing and i think people tend to think like the all the old testament spiritual things that were mentioned they mm -hmm. they it's like they forget jesus was casting out these same demons jesus like ephesians chapter 6 is talking about warfare in the spirit and it's talking about these pieces of armor that you need for that. And I think most people in churches now and even who claim faith in, um, in Christ in general don't really consider that part. Like they don't consider the spiritual aspect of how everything that we like, why are we supposed to obey? Like, why does it tell you you have your eyes, you have the eye gate in mm -hmm. the ear because if you're not guarding them, what happens to a gate that's open? Like anything comes in and out. You got to be careful what you watch, careful what you listen to. You're not even supposed to listen to every teacher. So like most people don't re even really think about that. Like even me, if I'm studying, I'll pray yeah. before I watch a video because sometimes you might just start to believe <laughs> any and everything. Yeah. Me and Jay were actually, while you were shoveling snow, we were talking about that uh, you know, Christ says, "Take heed what you hear," because he says, "Not it's not what comes out the in the drought that defiles a man. It come, what's come out of his mouth? Well, where that come from? It came from the heart. Well, how do you get in the heart? Ears yep. and eyes, right? So you take you have to take heed what you hear. Take heed that you have to always guard. You have to always keep, you're a watchman over your own heart. Yeah, I, I call the heart a garden." I'm not going to let no man plant seeds in my garden. I'm going to make sure now, if you got a seed of truth, you can give it to me and I'll plant it in my garden. But you ain't, but that's the problem is when you sit in front of a television or even, or sit in front of a, sit in a pew. All you're doing is that, allowing that to go in your ears and your eyes because you, you're not able, you can't speak. No, you, how many people? Well, I guess if you if you you're a passionate football fan, you might speak to the TV. But yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, but but outside of that, most people just take it in. And, and honestly, and that's why, go ahead. I think um, the biggest thing is is more of a egregious like crime because of the fact that in the pews people are less likely to see the wrong in it because of the title given. Like if someone's called a bishop or pastor, they automatically just think everything they ever going to say is godly. And like, for example, you don't have to see the dude, Lil Nas X, all these rappers doing weird satanic stuff to know it's evil. Like Christians see that and some of them still listen to the music and everything and they'll, and they justify it. But the thing is, they're not even hiding it no more. So you don't have to look for that. Now the wolves, the grievous wolves that Paul was talking about, mm -hmm. <laughs> they were, they're going to come as believers. So it's like, you yeah. gotta, it's, it's a lot of pastors right now. I've been seeing lately, like, especially the young energetic, get the crowd hype. Like they had twerk music in church. I just saw yeah. like, they had women like dancing, showing off their butt in church. And it's like, the people are defending them. Like the people are angry with the believe the few believers that are saying that's wrong. Like they're getting offended because people are saying you're breaking like the law of God. Like you're going against the gospel. 
And these people, they take the side of these guys because they're they have that stage. That's it. Like they don't even have to preach. They don't have to open the scripture once. They have the stage, and that's their certification. And that, and me and before, like I said, when you were out, so <laughs> you say that. <laughs> I mean, you know, we were, Jay Jay was telling me it's like, and I'm the same way. You can start watching somebody's video, and when they start talking about, well, I feel like this, or I feel like the, it, it, it's just time, kind of time to turn the video off. Yeah. So because it that's not. That's listen. When Satan tried to tempt Christ, do you know? Do you know what he did? He he did he did one thing. It is written. Mm-hmm. That was his answer every time. It is written, and that's that's my that should be my answer. That should be any video I'm watching. It should be that's that's what we're looking for. You know, that's the answer. It's written. This is what's written. And so, so when you start getting into, I think this, and I feel, now listen, I'll say I think this when it comes to prophecy, because prophecy is a little bit different. The scale, Um, like, it's kind of more vague with certain things. But I'm still basing it, even though I say I think this, I'm still basing it upon what I know is true in the scripture. Yeah. You know, because... Anybody can say, well, I don't know what the mark is. What's the mark of the beast? But as you get closer to the end, you kind of kind of see that yeah, I can take that funny. take that chip out of my debit card and put it in my. I mean, you, we y'all can see that when I was growing up, when I was a kid. I, we could, and we could see. Crazy thing is now it's like it's crazy because it says some people um, they see in part. And the thing is, the reality of it is like. 40 years ago, people probably would have thought it was one thing, and that's why they had the date setters and all those people. But now, like, honestly, in the early 2000s, like the 2010s, people thought it was going to be like, some people thought it was the debit card and credit card. But now, you could even say it's nanotech. Like, like they have this patch with these little etched, like, needles they can put on you. And it can literally send nanoparticles like they made a living nanobot that could eat and its job is to eat cells like they can make it change certain things and within the body. And I I just feel like the closer we get, the clearer things are going to get for sure. But it's like it's crazy how now like one thing that blew my mind when I first was born again is I always heard the gospel. I always heard a form of like the truth from somewhere someone whether it was through the left behind they tried to interpret it a certain way that i don't agree with but um i saw those things right it always (laughs) made me think like man what's what's going on and it made me watch but it's like it's crazy how people don't see the fact that people aren't seeing things now like start to speed up and kind of shape they don't see that that's a sign too like <laughs> yeah. i knew people that were so like when i wasn't really thinking about faith as much like i i just would pray and say like thank you god bless the food amen and that was my prayer life at one point like thank you god for waking me up thank you god for the food and i'd go do whatever and there were people that i saw reading like in public and now i saw the same people and it, they lost like it's like they lost the faith like it's like they don't believe anymore in a way by their actions like they no longer try to speak to people they're no longer actively like sharing the word and it kind of blows my mind to see somebody go from like at a time where you didn't see any of this like obvious stuff happening it was more like you had this fire but now you see this stuff kind of like it looks kind of like it's winding down and Now you want to decide to give up? That's the thing. Like, I don't get I mean, it, man. Well, I, I'm going to take... Go ahead. go ahead, Jay. No, you go ahead, Jay. I think to, to, to that point, I think that's the same thing that's going on when you have people... You know, you have people nowadays that are falling away from the faith. Um, I think it was Paul said they... Uh, they... They go... They go... They, they, they were never of us. They, they leave us because they were never of us. And we'll paraphrase. I'm I'm not as good as Lewis with scripture, uh, yeah. but to that, but to that, but to that point, when you said that you knew people where you were um, young in your faith, 
that were deep in their word and now they've they've fallen they've fallen away i mean that could be easy that can be easily led to people that nowadays that are they're, they're they think that this is that sign they think it this is the end times or this is like me and you are similar age man when tw- when 2000 kicked in when 1999 was was coming around tail end you mm-hmm. I, I i can guarantee you there were many people that were supposed to be that were that were christians that believed that oh this is the end this is when the this is when jesus is coming you back and you got people in the world yeah and a 2k that y2k bit and then when their lack of knowledge or their lack of truth is is presented in front of them now they fall they fall away where mm-hmm, you got yeah. people like and for me it's it's been very far and in between to find somebody who's been in a scripture been in a word in depth and have come to the truth now they've either been in a word and in depth and then they fall away or they're now they're spiritual not really following the most high and so it's like all right well that that leads me to believe and that leads me to the lead us to the point to where when the most high removes the veil over people's eyes when it comes to that time i think it's even more imperative that we us three and lewis and mark or seeing the truth of what it is, because there was those that thought they were seeing the truth and they were getting a watered down version of it. Versus now we are re- we are we're seeing the truth in terms of it's not just what scripture says, but this is what scripture says, and it's saying that because of who you are. Like for the longest, man, I when I say I'm just not hearing about we being Israel, when I'm telling you that that's been something that's been heavy on me, not in terms of don't believe it, but then you you think back and like. How many of my my uncles or my forefathers or my or my family has never even touched that at all? And so whatever they're taking for their scripture, be it from a man in pew, it's just enough for them to get my money from you at this offering and for you to keep this when things are bad or, or slavery <clears throat> or to get this this slavery, um, slavery faith. And so. To that point, man, I, I agree with you, Ruben. Like it's it, people are fall, people are falling away because you're not you're not getting you're not getting full of truth. You're getting whatever was told to you then, and then you had nobody then to actually really reveal the truth to you. Versus now, like the truth has gotten deeper. We know who we are. Speaking of the truth, oh, well, I'll let you go first. No, that's it. That's it. I'm not. <laughs> remember last time I brought up the point of you remember when I told you. Um, <clears throat> There's been people that don't think the Temple Mount is the real Temple Mount. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Guess what? I, you know, there for years, people have been talking about they actually found the city of David. And it's a few miles the opposite way in the way they know that like it's off the topic. But I just thought it was interesting because I literally just started looking into it. Mm-hmm. So, you know how when David was told to purchase the threshing floor, right? Mm-hmm. But he didn't build the temple. Solomon built it near that threshing floor. Yep. Well, not only that, there had to be a water source for the priests to cleanse themselves. There's no water source immediately around where they think the temple mount is right now. Yeah. And so the thing is, the place actually called the city of David is a little bit south of the Dome of the Rock. Yeah. It's a few miles away. I think it's like two miles south. And the thing is, the dude brought up a really good point. When Paul was saved by a Roman uh, <laughs> legion when the Jews were trying to kill him, it said they went down into into the city to take him out because that wall that they call the Wailing Wall. Think about what Jesus said. He said, "Not a stone would be on top of the other." So how is that a part of the temple? Yeah. So that alone. It's like you don't believe Jesus was literally saying not one stone. Why would like every other stone but one wall be there? But the actual belief is that's actually the Roman legions. Like that's one of their forts. But there's more evidence that the city of David is in this threshing floor because um, I believe it was in Isaiah. It talks about it will be a place where people will plow. And that's all they do right now over there. And. It has the waterways near where Hezekiah made the tunnels are over there. Hezekiah's tunnels are there. It leads to there. They found um, the pools for like cleansing over there. Like it's some it's some good evidence. I, I just wanted to kind of bring it up because it actually made me because honestly, 
I believe it. Like, and I believe it because they're finding all the evidence there, but they have not found anything where they currently believe it is. In my oh, yeah. and I, I think that's that's part of the that's part of the Catholic Church. They, yeah, they they've come in there, and I'm not saying Jerusalem's not there. No, I believe, but I'm saying that they flip every, some things. People change names and move things around. So, go ahead. You ever heard of how? <laughs> you ever heard of before the like what happened at the Dome of the Rock during the Crusades, right? I have to refresh me, and I'll tell you. So, I w I was like, of course, growing up like around church and hearing. I always was interested in history. During the Crusades, Salah Hadin. When after they built the Dome of the Rock, one thing that happened was when the Crusaders came and they conquered Jerusalem, they took the crescent moon off the mosque and put a cross and called it the temple. And people started calling that the Temple Mount since that moment. Yeah. The Romans did that. So it's like, yeah. what else haven't they messed up? Like that's yeah, what kind of what else shot and dangled around here. It, it's not. It's not going to matter if I'm right in the interpretation is the fact because it's all going to be destroyed anyway yeah um and and everything's going to have to be rebuilt and matter of fact the study we we're going to do the study we were going to do tonight is talking about the rebuilding of the temple and uh because i believe that happens on the, in the seventh seal yeah. i believe i believe the seventh seal starts the jubilee in other words mm -hmm. 49 years is over christ came back raises up the army he he the 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 harvest the northern southern kingdom come back to israel they start the jubilee that's the end of the sixth seal the beginning of the seventh seal but it's before the seven years so there's going to be a, like a three or four year period in between the sixth and the seventh uh, seal mm -hmm. where you're gonna you're gonna see gog gog and magog you're gonna see you're gonna see zerubbabel is going to be there and they're going to rebuild the temple and and that temple is going to be rebuilt right before the false prophet confirms the covenant the seven years and and listen when i say i'll tell you what i believed in 2018 because i was studying prophecy and really didn't have very many people to talk to. I was in I was in South Carolina. I was living in my house before I got rid of it, and and uh, I did a video because I thought I thought it was I thought 1948 was the first seal, May night right. In mm -hmm. other words, when they went in when when the Balfour Declaration when that those people went in there. I, and I still think that that was the first seal, right? But I thought that it was going to be 70 years, and then the second seal was going to start, and that was going to be the destruction of Jerusalem. So I put I misplaced the 70 years where it was supposed to go. And so I was, I was basically, now I was given a disclaimer, said I'm not absolutely sure, but I think Jerusalem's going to be destroyed in 2018. Now, um, I was wrong, and and now I'm, I made a disclaimer that I wasn't sure. But the thing about it is, is you talk about these people falling away, and people fall away exactly for some of the reasons y'all say they fall away is they think they're getting close and they're waiting for a certain sign, and when it doesn't happen, right, they just lose all hope. Well, that's not what that's not what. That's not what people who study the scripture do. We study, especially when it comes to prophecy, because it's a big puzzle. We study, and when we find out, if we find out we were wrong about something, we don't throw everything to the wind. We's like, okay, it's time to go find out why I was wrong. I got to start studying some more and figure out where I was wrong and fix it. And that's the one thing that I've never been afraid to do. I've never been afraid to go to the people. It's the people I teach on Tuesday mornings. Uh, they'll tell you I'm never afraid to go back to them and say you know what I taught you this and here's why I was wrong and here's what I believe based upon the scripture because if you're afraid to say you're wrong if you start down if you start walking down a path 
and and you go one percent the wrong way. Have a great one. So next, it time. don't seem like much until you get a, a hundred miles down the road, and then yeah. you realize you realize <laughs> you, went down the, you, know, you went down the wrong. Yeah. What what's what is your view on the rapture? Because I know it's different than mine. I don't believe in the rapture, right? So I want to know what what do you believe? Do you believe it happens at a specific time? There's more than one, or what? Honestly, about the rapture, I don't like. Like I said, I believe the Bible says there's two resurrections. So I believe I don't believe in the rapture as in believers won't go through anything because it kind of seems to be that believers will go through a lot of things. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And okay. I, I think that's why it's a lot of encouragement. Like why is there so much encouragement to fight the good fight, finish the race, kept the faith. Like that's what Paul said. And he's encouraging people to endure to the end. And yeah. the thing is do as far as the timing of it, I believe it's at the coming of Christ. Like, okay. That's what I believe. Okay, so here, here's what I believe. If you want to call it a rapture, I guess you can. The reason I don't, yeah. and it was at the seventh trump, in the twinkling of an eye, that's what you're, so that's the same as I believe, but here's where I'm different um, than most, because some people call it pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Post-trib. And so it's a post-trib rapture, but I don't call it, the reason I don't call it a rapture is because even the post-trib people who believe and they're right, because he says in the moment, in the moment, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, right, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain will be caught up. Caught up. So you can call it a rapture, but the reason I don't is because I don't believe all believers go in it. I don't. Yeah, that, that, that's my point. Is is it's not it's not a rapture if all believers don't. I, I don't like that word rapture. Um, you, because he he warns you. He warns you. He says he warns Christians if if, if there's two on the housetop. Because now he says heaven's going to open up, right? And he's going to start to descend. He says every eye shall see him, mm -hmm. including believers. He, and this is what he says: when you do see, he says, when, yeah, and the, even the, the and the and the tribes of the earth are going to mourn, right? He says every eye shall see him. So he says that. When you see him, if you're a believer, you should hold your head up and look up for your redemption. Talking about the redemption of the body, draw up now. Yep. But he says that. But he says that two are going to be on the housetop, two in the field, and he says one will be taken, the other. Well, he he uses the example of Lot's wife. He says, "Don't go down in your house and get your stuff," because. He's associating that is if you're a believer, when the Lord's coming back in your heart, where's your heart? He says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So if you if all you've done is you all you care about is worldly stuff like Esau, he gave his birthright away mm -hmm. for an earthly good. Right. One more one meal. You're selling your birthright as a believer. You're selling your inheritance. Now, I'm not talking about your eternal life, but I'm talking about your inheritance. You you will not go. You will not go in that seventh trump. You will not go up and be with the Lord forever, starting in the at the millennial kingdom, if 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 your heart's in the wrong place. So you I, have, I'll tell you this. Go ahead. I 100 I, I agree with that, but that's also a part of why I believe. The timeline might be shorter than we think, because he also says when you begin to see these things and based on the list of things, he said when you begin to see these things. So begin is normally like when something's just starting, he's telling them to look up. So I don't think it, if it was already something that was like so obvious, it was a thousand years already that people would begin to see. Like if it was something, I think it will be something like at one time the convergence of all these things that he said when you start to see those things converge all going on simultaneously that's how kind of how i view like but i don't think that means right then and there oh yeah like next year but i also believe it does mean it's it's the warning sign because like if you look at a birth 
it doesn't stop. It gets more and more intense. Then the contractions get shorter and shorter and shorter. But it's never going to like that's why I also don't believe based on what we see now. It could be a period where it's kind of chill and everything seems normal and then it goes back crazy. But the contractions in birth is that I believe that's why he makes the comparison, because in birth, the contractions, they get more intense and they get shorter. Right. Get short. the birth. So I, I don't see how. With the intensity of things now, how it could possibly not go forward as far as intensity goes. And that's kind of part of the reason why I see it that way. But another thing is, I do believe he says at the last Trump, there's no other trumpets mentioned. They, these people come up with this separate group of trumpets. And I'm like, where are no. you getting it from? No. Like, even the Feast of Trumpets, like some people say, it's going to be the Feast of Trumpets. It could be. It could align with the Feast of Trumpets. But it says the Trump of God. So it's not going to be people doing a ritual on Earth that blow and call like, no. That's not what it's going to be. It says the trump of God and with the voice of an archangel is going to mm -hmm. come. He's going to come with a shout. So I'm like, I hear people teach these things. And another thing is, I, I don't think it's going to be secret. I don't think it like I don't think it's going to be. I actually just read something and one dude try to differentiate the second coming from the gathering with by saying one, he just appears and the other one, he comes back. But I'm like, dude, did you ever look up what appears means? <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> if they say an artist is going to make an appearance at your concert, he came to the concert. It don't necessarily mean like he's just going to pop his head in the door and go back. Like when somebody yeah. come like an appearance on a TV show, they come to the set. Like, they're there. So they try mm -hmm. to separate it. But I actually found a verse that I actually got to go back. I put it in my notes, but it's crazy because it talks about the coming of Christ being the appearing. And I never really noticed it. And that's the perfect verse for them. The people that think the appearing and the second coming is different. I'm like, I bro, did, it says it. I did an entire Bible study on that exact. The appearing, the revealing, because that's the word, the word revelation. The entire it's book revealing. of revelation is the revealing of Christ. Yeah, that's what revelation means, the revealing. And, and in so, my opinion, it's yeah. like it's even with the order of the judgments of how the things happen. You know what I believe as far as the cosmology, the true cosmology of the earth. Yeah. The rest of that stuff, don't like, for example, people always say all eyes are going to see him because he's going to be on TV. Did you ever read Revelation? What happens before that moment? Yeah. You telling me. One earthquake could come and take out the power for weeks. Snowstorms. You telling me the biggest earthquake happens. These things are falling from the sky. Like these plagues and disasters are happening. And you telling me you think there's going to be just power everywhere. There's going to be war. You think everybody's just going to have a telephone and TVs and watching. No, it don't make sense. Like we no. lose power if lightning strike a pole. Like, <laughs> After all those judgments, like, and the thing is, I do believe in the part where it says we are not appointed to wrath, but I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think that means you're not going to be here. I think just like in Egypt, he protected them. They were there. It was thick darkness for the Egyptians and the people who didn't put the blood. But for Israel, they had no problems. You might, and, you might, you might not be here. Paul's not going to be here. Right. <laughs> he finished his horse, though. Yeah, and, and I listen. I can prove. I, I seriously, I can I can prove there's a a resurrection of people in the great tribulation to go through it. Believers, I think, just like Elijah and Moses, they didn't finish their ministry. Moses was supposed to. He was the one that was supposed to take them into the land. He didn't finish his ministry. His body was buried by the Lord. That's why Michael was contending with something about his body. And, and and Elijah, we know he's coming back because the scripture says he's coming back. We know he's coming back. And that's, that's the funny thing. They like people are guessing who who's who is going to be a lot. It say the name, right? <laughs> like It yeah. says his name. Like one of the right. few people, it says by name. And they're like, who is going to be Elijah? Elijah. <laughs> that's the answer. Elijah. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus said that. He says, Elijah truly shall first come and establish all things. And so, 
so I so like I said, I believe Elijah's coming back. Uh, I believe well, I know Elijah and Moses are coming back. I know Zerubbabel's coming back. I can't wait to like it's just the the thought of everything and how things are unfolding. Like I really believe we're gonna be seeing some Marvel comics type stuff happening in the sky. Like the thing is, I feel like that's why they kind of put it out so much because it makes you believe in the impo- like the impossible is like. You see it and you watch it, but it makes people not believe that something like that is happening. But like Sensitizing. when Jesus was being arrested, mm-hmm. he said, I am he. And they fell to the ground. Like around, people, yeah. they don't ever show that in the movie. Like it's just certain things in the Bible, like Peter getting gold out of a fish's mouth. Like, you know, Paul getting bit by the snake, surviving, no problems. Like sh- yeah. shipwrecks. I'm like, these people had superpowers by the, like, the spirit gave them superpowers, and it's like the 144,000. Some people think they're just going to be preaching, but I literally believe they're going to breathe fire out of their mouth. Like, I, I believe it. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, some people don't think so. Some people say, oh, they're just going to preach. And I'm like, so you think when Jesus come back, and like, I honestly, the sword, you can make an argument, but the thing I, I'm saying is, do you think he's not going to be killing people? Like, you think Jesus, nobody's going to die when he comes? You know, it, it's weird because my my view on my view has changed a little bit recently because, you know, I used, you know, because he told Peter, he said, put your sword back in your sheath, right? Mm-hmm. You know, this has to be fulfilled. You know, he that lives by the sword dies by the sword and everything. And so I think we're in that we were in we're in that age of where we're not. You know, because Christ said, you know, if I wanted to, I could call, you know, how many legions of angels I could call right now. Yeah. But I've always thought that the sword, he's bringing the sword and his army back at the seventh trump. He is. Mm -hmm. But I don't think when that, I don't think that's when it changes. I think it changes at the sixth seal. In other words, that, you know, no more of that putting your sword back in your, because He's raising up 144,000, but he calls them a, he calls them an army. Mm-hmm. You don't raise you don't call them an what does an army do? Right. <laughs> They're going in to kick out the people who are in Israel out of their land and take the land back. So so and guess who they're following? Jesus. <laughs> they're following <laughs> Jesus. So he he he's not telling them put your sword in your sheath then. He going to have his own. <laughs> yeah. So, and so, another thing is, I was reading, I believe, um, in Zechariah, most people don't, like, I guess it's something that's not discussed enough. You ever realize in Zechariah, the prophecy, when he's, see, he's seeing, like, God's vengeance, the day of the Lord, yeah. and he describes his face was a face that he'd never seen, and it was fierce, and it talks, it's like right when it's talking about him stomping like i believe he will crush people like grapes <laughs> like when the blood is on getting on his robe like i think that's gonna literally happen like i think stuff like that is gonna ha- you know you know when you're a kid and you watch you know movie when you watch like what we would call horror movies movies yeah. like movies like frankenstein and werewolves and vampire that stuff didn't scare me yeah and when you start getting into the occult yeah evil yeah. spirits and stuff i didn't man. bother <laughs> like yeah. the paranormal activity movies that started coming i didn't even bother i never seen one and i never wanted to and yeah. i feel like the difference with me is being that my family is haitian and yeah. you know what like a lot of haitians are into voodoo not my family but at least my siblings blood you don't <laughs> invite that stuff and the thing is, it's like, that's why I feel like a lot of people don't have the understanding that spiritual things is no joke. You don't play with that stuff. No, you don't. Because even if you're a believer, there are certain things you can do that can give the legal right for them to do things to you. And it's like, for example, you can't think because you say you believe in Christ, you could bring a Ouija board and nothing like, you know, there you're not going to go to a ritual sacrifice to a demon and think you're going to be OK. Like. There's a lot of things that people are unwill, like they're unknowingly. All right, Jay. Have a good night. Good night. There's there's a lot of uh, things people take part of that they unknowingly, like they're 
in agreement with evil and they just don't think so because it's on a tv show or it's on a it's in a movie like there's certain words i believe like for example i heard that the dude who made lord of the rings and everything was a believer but this is my thing where did you get the languages from like these intricate languages for these evil beings it literally has a whole language system where did they come from yeah and then they have different languages that aren't real like languages that we speak but then you have another language but then there's a movie like harry potter and they speak a similar language to what you put in, but you're a believer they're both doing magic they both have wizards and and they speak this language that sounds demonic if you ask me like those elf languages that you hear in those movies sound demonic yeah i remember i, I watched the, the hobbit movie and the girl was doing this like healing thing on this dude's leg and starts saying this thing and i turned the volume down i was like dang i thought this dude was a christian like <laughs> This yeah. sound demonic. Like that's just how I. I think people unknowingly, they hear Christian and they just invite these things, or even if it's secular, they're just letting stuff in. But the Bible, the Bible says, "Try the spirits." Mm -hmm. So yeah, I try. I'm not. I'm not letting anything in my eyes or in my ears without testing it against the Scripture. You know what's crazy? Um, I have a very good friend of mine. Um, grew up Catholic. And I was telling them to get rid of those rosaries and then those idols, man. Like you can't keep a statue and think that's you can't pray before that and think that God is listening to that prayer that you're doing, thinking that means something to him. And like this is when I like first was born again. And the thing is, he he I told him, I said and he told me like, oh, yeah, my grandpa talks to me, but his grandpa died. And I'm like, so you're communicating with the dead because in Catholicism, that's not a bad thing. Uh, and, yeah. And I told him, I said, dude, if you want to know if you're really in the faith, test the spirit. And I, I said, you said he talks to you, right? He said, yeah, every time I come home, he opens the blinds and it's the blinds. That's how I know he's there. The blinds always open right when I come home from work. And then he said, sometimes he'll leave a message in the mirror for him. So I said, OK, this is what you do. You ask it, say, do you believe that Jesus has come in the flesh or is come in the flesh? I said, ask it. Do you believe Jesus died, resurrected in three days? And he ascended up to at the right hand of the father. Ask him if he believes that. And he said <laughs> it wrote. First of all, it wrote backwards. Like it wrote backwards on the mirror, like but it put E S. And I said, and that convinced you? I said, it ain't even right. Yes, it put ES. I'm like, dude, this is how people get caught up in the occult and demonic things because you, first of all, you think you ask for an answer and it didn't even say yes. I'm like, what, what language, what does that even mean? What does ES mean? I said, if that's all that it takes Evil to convince spirit. you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I told him, I said, dude, I wouldn't be satisfied with that. Are you kidding me? I, I, I like I tell that thing to get up out of there. I said, bro, it, it could tell you everything about your life. That's called a familiar spirit. Don't yeah. play around with that stuff. And I told him, start praying in Jesus' name every time. Pray out loud in Jesus' name. Ask to be covered <laughs> by the yeah. blood of the Lamb. And he he said, oh, it just it stopped happening. I'm like, but you think that's your grandpa? And your grandpa was a believer, though. Like, come on, man, you getting caught up. But he was also a big fan of Harry Potter. And yeah. I'm like, dude, can't be deceived that way, man. <laughs> well, but, you know, the thing the thing about it is. You know, I, I, I this is what I believe. I, I believe when he says for God so love the world that if you believe. You 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 have the promise of eternal life. Now, mm -hmm. the problem is, is that eternal life that you're promised doesn't begin until after the thousand years. You'll be raised up. You get to spend it. Now, if you're raised up at the second resurrection or after that, it's, it's not in glory. You don't have a crown. You don't have rewards. You don't have a glorified body. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm beginning to believe it might be the body you have now. It's just going to be 
but there's not going to be death. There's not only pain. There's not going to be sickness. Um, but you're going to spend eternity with a flesh and blood body. And but if you get a glorified body, because a flesh and blood body shall not inherit the kingdom. In other words, if you get raised up at the first resurrection, you get the kingdom. You get a crown. You get to be ruler. You get to enjoy a thousand years, uh, an entire day, where. Mm-hmm. You get to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and 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 then then after the thousands of years is over, you got to get to work. You know why? You got to rule over all these people that are coming up out of hell. Mm-hmm. And, and not just that, I think there's people who's actually flesh and blood bodies that grow up in the world during the thousand year kingdom. And so so you're going to be not just going to be a king. He says, we shall reign as kings and priests. So I think you're going to have the, the job of ruling. And you're going to have the job of teaching the world about the truth about the true God. The God over there that's ruling in Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. It's going to be our job to teach them. There's people that think the thousand year reign already happened. Yeah. And so I actually like I listen for the sake of giving a rebuttal if necessary. And I listen to the dude. One, I don't believe it at all. It's like yeah. it's all this evidence for his first coming and people doubt it. You telling me he came and did this destruction thing and nobody come on. Like where's in the lines eating grass and the child's laying down and putting his hand yeah. on the ass, the whole and, <laughs> yeah, we're not that's what I'm saying. It's so much things to it. And besides his camp, it never says the kingdom leaves again. It says they're gonna go against the camp of the saints. Where's the camp of the saints? You think they just went invisible? Like, <laughs> but yeah, so this guy was talking about it and he he said, oh, um, during the 18. So what they believe is the dark ages was the thousand years You're because correct. it was exactly a thousand years or whatever. The problem is, is you saying the Lord came back. Well, it says every eye shall see him. So we should have some witnesses that he. He came right. back living witnesses it, it, and it says that he was going to sit on the throne of David in in New Jerusalem or Jerusalem for a thousand years. Mm-hmm. And and um, it says that the, the you know, the lion shall lay down with the lamb and none of that stuff is none of that stuff's happened. Yeah, those none, people, none, are, none, of, none of it. I really don't get it. Also, the fact that. There's the tree of life that people are going to they eat from. There has to be somebody on earth right now more than a thousand years old. It it never says after the thousand years, oh yeah, and then they're gonna die again. There yeah. should be so many people. First of all, in a thousand years, the population, who knows how many people will be left, but if people are gonna be resurrected and they're gonna be some people who survived the tribulation, there's gonna be I'm pre- like unless there's less than the amount of people that, that was at the time of Noah, it never says how many people are going to survive. But the chances are like even if there's eight in a thousand years, <laughs> like, yeah. like there should be at least a several thousand people that are over a thousand years old that can testify and say it like they're not going to be dead because it's the little season. And let's say we're over the thousand years. Right. What's he going to do at the end of the thousand years? Death shall what? Be t- yeah, Not right. Probably. So why are people still dying? And that's the thing. I'm like, the some of these guys that believe it, I, I listen to it. And it's, honestly, I listen to it for the humor because it's you should hear humor. some of the theories. I'm like, are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> like, you, you know what it comes me? down to? It always comes down to one thing. The foundation. The foundation is do you believe in the book? Mm-hmm. Because if you if if you don't think the book is perfect, then you can go anywhere you want to go. Yeah, you can believe anything you want to believe. the The difference between me and you and Lewis and Mark and Jay and you know people we know, we believe that the book is perfect. It's from God. It doesn't have lies in it. And when I study it, I don't have to doubt because that's the Satan. Satan's first. His first thing that he always does when he just like when he came to Eve, hath God said. Mm-hmm. And then he gets down a little bit farther and he says, Thou shalt surely not die. He called basically he says, he causes doubting God's word, and then he calls God's word a lie. Mm-hmm. 
And if you're in either one of those camps, you're going to believe whatever you, anything. But if you're in our camp, I'm not going to doubt God's word. And I know God's not a liar. I know he's a liar. So that, and that's why, that's why people are going to want to kill us eventually. Yeah. If you live long that's enough true. in this world, you're going to die. Stephen died for it. He didn't tell lies. Jesus died for it. The disciples died for it. Not for lies, but for truth. And so, um, because you can't even tell a person anymore. You can't tell. Listen, you, you you don't even have to worry about telling them the truth. You can't tell them that what they believe is wrong. Yeah. Or else, you know, that that's like an attack on them. Mm-hmm. Then the Pope walks in and he's standing there and I look at the guy and I hear a voice say Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing I had. I was like, what? Because at the time I was going to church on Sunday and I'm not against it still because I believe you can worship the Lord every day. You can worship Christ any day. But. They changed the Sabbath. In -hmm. Catholicism to sunday and one thing that i've been look like hearing about a lot lately is the in 2025 they want to pass this law it's called the sunday law i don't Mm. know if you've ever looked into it not yet dude it's (laughs) exactly what my dream showed and i just heard about it the end of last year i had this dream in 2022 i can send you the audio i recorded it like as soon as i wake up i recorded the audio so i won't forget a detail yeah. And I listened back to it because I like I remember exactly the dream, but I remember seeing it more than I can say what I saw. So I just said it right away to, to you. Can you when you have when you have those types of dreams, are they different than other dreams? I mean, you can yeah. kind of like you can tell the difference, right? See, normally when I have a dream, I don't remember them. I I, I, might, I know that I had a dream, but I don't remember them. And then another thing is I can't actually do nothing. So, but that's what I think the difference between a dream and a vision for me, like, I don't, I don't know if there's a definition for them, but to me, a vision, like, for example, when John saw visions, he was taking, he was taken in the spirit and in the vision, it's like he was there. But a dream is like Joseph's dream when he saw his brothers coming and like he saw the stars and that's what I feel like is the difference. Because when I when I have like visions, one, I don't have to really sleep that long and it feels like I'm there for the whole length of time. Yeah. So I think that you might be right on that, because I think about the different dreams in the Bible, Um, uh, like Pharaoh Pharaoh had a dream, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. But when it starts talking about visions, right, like with Ezekiel and Daniel and John and. And different people, it's like What's they're, gonna, there. they're there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're 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 part of. It's like they're in the dream. That's yeah. not. I won't call it a dream. They're in the vision. Whereas the dream is, I mean, because Pharaoh's dream was just he saw these seven cows and yeah. he saw you know even Nebuchadnezzar. Somebody. He just had the dream of the tree, and no, like when nobody could interpret his dream of the statue of the tree. Yeah. Yeah, like that was a dream. And yeah. honestly, another thing that I noticed is the difference between dreams and visions. For example, like the seven cows, they represented what was going to happen. The stars represented Joseph and his brothers. And with visions, it's like the actual events happening, but there's symbolism that ex- that's explained in every vision. And it's yeah. like, honestly, maybe some of those symbols might be symbols that they actually saw in a way. And it also represented it because think about like certain houses of royalty had seals like in a lot of the um, the royal family. They have a dragon on one of their family shields and they have a white horde. Like he could have actually seen that and it was given an interpretation of what he saw. But yeah. I believe yeah, like I, I, John, he I was taken that. in the spirit to that time. And Daniel saw the last days like that's why I think they make the like the difference because they were always it always tells you the time period and i saw a vision of the latter days and i believe they literally 
you just said something that made me want to get look up something when I get off here because, you know, the the red dragon, right? Um, you know, the the Rothschilds. Their name before Rothschild was I think Rich. Bauer. Oh. Bauer, well, yeah, Bauer, but Rothschild, Rothschild, Rothschild means red, red shield. Yeah, and and I want to check their, I want to check their like, what do you call it? Their family shield, their their oh. shield, and see what's Wait till on you it. Do. I I already did. <laughs> you, you're gonna be blown. You might be blown away because it does know. have the symbolism from some of the beasts are on that yeah. shield. Like really, yeah. The horse, the dragon, the leopard yeah. feet, bear claw. Yeah, those. Yeah, they definitely have some interesting symbols on it. And guess what? I don't know if you ever knew what they call King Charles. They call him like the Dark Prince. Like they have some weird names going on. So, yeah. but honestly, oh, I the but I'm gonna tell you this. I have been seeing some things from that vision happen, and this is the thing. Typically. What I've noticed is since I've been born again, I'll have a vision and within about two years, I will start to see something I vividly saw was a sign in the dream. Yeah, if my theory is right, you know, this, this country splits. I mean, because, you know, you think about all the things you were talking about because not, not we're not just talking about different, you know, there's a, like between California and Texas, there's a, I mean, it's an entire different culture, right? Yeah, and sure. and then and then you start you start dealing with um, if they if if um, immigrants from Mexico start flooding into California, then that's that's kind of always been the case. California's yeah, Mexico. Texas, Texas, <laughs> Texas, stick them on an airplane and send them to Washington, send them up to D.C., right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's just so this this country, it's coming to a it's coming to a, a crossroads where, you know, some people are just like, you know, what we're tired, we're tired. I'm not, we're not putting up what, the stuff that's going on in Washington D.C. We'll, 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 we'll start our own country. We'll have. I, I really think this country is going to be Divided. split. Mm -hmm. I really think it's going to be split. And um, um, a lot of people are I'm having just, visions of America splitting too. And the thing is, I do believe because of Joel. When it says the young men would drink dreams and like oh, they were like the women, young men and women basically are going to have dreams and visions. That's something that's been happening a lot. So yeah. it's just like I do think certain things are being shown and we're it's up to us to like do what Daniel well, did. Well, well, I'll tell you why I don't think you're crazy. Um, now, I'm not saying you have the right interpretation of your dreams. I will say that. You may or may not, but what? Here's what I'll say: um, because of what Joel says, because I believe every word of God. I believe if you're a Hebrew in this country, and and you're having dreams, and you're a believer, right, and you're seeking truth, that you need to like, you don't need to like ignore those. But here's, you know, one of the one of the things that Daniel would do was if he had a, a dream and he didn't understand the dream, nice. he would pray and fast. Mm -hmm. And God would reveal the dream, what it meant. And so maybe maybe the next time you have a dream that, you know, you're not sure about, think about just praying and fasting a little bit and see and asking God, because he says, you have not because you ask not. Thing is, I remember them in my mind. Like, it's hard for me to memorize a lot of stuff. Even, I'm I'm good at mem. I'm I'm not forgetful at all. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to dreams, I normally don't remember. And I remember every one, every detail. If I close my eyes, I can see it. And I was I started fasting for thirty days. And every question I would ask God to show me, He showed me. Everyone, like I asked Him. I was praying. I told you what happened when I prayed. People, they might not believe it, but it happened. I recorded some of it because I never believed in a time frame for the rapture. But one thing is that gave me such a hunger to see that actually happen that mm -hmm. I'm, it made me mad at stuff. Like it made me hate 
doing other stuff like for a while and yeah. god kind of had to get get my mindset out of like wanting to be there like wanting to that to happen and he yeah. taught me like you got stuff to do and yeah. that's why i i'm i'm seeking the truth and people that are seeking the truth i want to seek it with them but also like that's why i don't really back down from things that i know like there's things that i think based on what i read but like i believe god speaks to people still and i don't think you should like go look for another person because i honestly believe if you truly want to hear for yourself fast and pray and he will tell you and he showed me already like well, Jesus. I asked about the dome. that's what yeah. really solidified it but i literally saw it several times like <laughs> one night i asked him and i said lord how close are we and the I, my eyes open the roof clears the sky ticks like a clock and i was like what in the world but when i got out of this vision i walk outside and i see exactly what i saw in the dream but for some reason i knew that it was 11 59 and it ticked to 12. like it was like in my vision it was 11 59 in the sky it ticks to 12. and i was like what does that mean and then the it's a late hour like it's the final i believe we're in that last hour and it's just like everything that i've ever asked god he has answered and one of the biggest thing is that's why i'm so big on like i like why when we we're talking about babylon and all these things like i i agree with what you're saying but i also do think something there's something because it specifically mentions pharmakia and when you look at those things i think those have have to be like because even there's there's been forced things like all over and i feel like that's why I've, i like to talk to you and ask you and bring up a random question because there's been things that i i've seen but there's things that i haven't necessarily seen it's, it's just me speculating based on what yeah. i'm reading and here, here's what i would here's what i would say to you is i'm not sure whether i'm right about all this stuff i, I think I, now i believe with all my heart I study and he shows it to me and that's yeah. what I teach. Like, cause I've told you with my eyes, it doesn't look like we're that far now, mm -hmm. but here's what I would tell you is there's a few things that have to happen, right? Of course we know that the abomination, because that until that, that day come, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord's not going to come. He says that day shall not come except to come upon and the man of sin be revealed. But even before that, Israel's got to go back to the land for sure. And you and I, and you and I both know, guess who's not in the land right now. Hey, but at the same time, can a nation be born in a single day? It yeah. could happen. <laughs> like, Oh no, you know, and, 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 get them out of here. And, and that's, and kind of like, that's why yeah, I, not, I said that yeah. like it could happen. Like it took Israel how many days to leave Egypt? Like, I'm pretty sure like when Pharaoh let the people go, it didn't take a year. Like, no, no, no. no. you know what he said? said? Like, the night they eat the Passover, here's what they said. He said, uh, have your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. In other words, be ready to go because when that cry comes at midnight, because mm -hmm. they find out their firstborn is dead, they're going to push you out. Yeah, you're not you're not going to have to ask anymore to, to go. They're going to push you out. And I honestly believe something similar, like not maybe not the angel of death because they don't say that. But I, I think in terms of disaster is going to be what it takes, because I don't see I don't really see just get out being a thing, <laughs> like especially with the people being so tied into the land. It's going to have to be something that forces them to flee, so forcing them to get out. But um, yeah, definitely. Like one thing I can say, it makes me rethink and study because I've been doing that with several things. I have several different topics right now that I'm looking into. But the main thing is I keep seeing the Pope, so I've been looking into their belief system and. Yeah, and I, 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 that was when I first got saved. That's where a lot of my I know a lot about Catholicism. 
Yeah. I, I used to believe that the Antichrist was the Pope. and no, I could, <laughs> Yeah, no, well, I used to. And the yeah, reason yeah. I did was because I thought the whore, the, that city was was wrong, for mm-hmm. number one. And there's a description in there that describes almost one of the popes to a T. And he was wounded. <laughs> yeah. See, here's, here, here's, here's one thing we know about the Antichrist. He's going to be killed, yeah, and, and resurrected. So, so you know, even if he was alive and is alive right now, he's got to die first. Yeah. So and and so you know, people keep thinking, oh, he's got to be a, some man that's alive to be the end. No, he could have died, and he's going yeah. to be resurrected. So, I, I get excited studying prophecy, but I'm not so stuck on everything that I think I know. But it's. I get more like, yeah, hype about it. Just when just seeing this stuff happen, I just Israel, the awakening, and another thing is like the time of Gentiles, like Christians not seeing that there's people there, and the time of Gentiles is it over? So can you no longer? And that's the thing. It's like I can, yeah. you, I can prove. I did an entire Bible study. I know when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. But um, yeah, I. It's about that time, so I understand you on the other other coast. Yeah, so. yeah, it's almost uh, eleven here. So, but but yeah. uh, you know, like any t- any night, you got a free night, you want to talk about some stuff. Just let me let me just give me a little bit of advance notice. I'm telling you, I love talking about the word, and I have a group like it's younger guys, and I'm gonna I want to introduce you to two of them eventually, but um. I would call you every day if I could. I'm just saying that's how much I like to talk about it because it just kind of makes me feel bad that nobody who believes really like it, enjoy talking about the word. And I, I love talking now, about the word. I'm going to be honest with you. That's really the only thing I talk about. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I yeah. could talk to somebody about sports, but, like, I don't really care. Like, at the end, like I don't. But when it comes to the word, I feel like I could talk about it all day if, if it was possible. Yeah. But, so, so maybe what we can do is we can start like pick a subject. Yeah, we'll just pick a subject, and that's what we'll talk about for the whole night, oh. and 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 not and try not to stray. And that way, we can kind of get into if we agree. What we can do is we can try to figure out what's all the objections. If me, let's say we agree on it, we'll just try to figure out what questions would somebody bring up to object to what we believe or mm-hmm. if we disagree we don't have to do that because we have yeah, each yeah. other to, yeah um because the entire like i said the entire goal is i don't want to believe lies you know and 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 that's that's what you find out about this little group we got here is that's what we have in common yeah for sure well i think we got a few topics that we could pick from this conversation so if you're going back to watch it <laughs> There's a couple that we could go further and dig deeper into, but like I said, I, like right now, I, it's, I feel like I've been more drawn to exactly what we're already talking about, the seven seals. So I think that's that's great. But as far as like individually, I like I already have a list. <laughs> like, honestly, I have a list of things and it's just things that I find interesting that I have studied and you, like, you, just ought, to see see my, you ought to see my external hard drive. Man, like all my, oh, my, my notes. I, I, I have notes. so many journals that I, I lost. <laughs> Somebody's gonna find it. Hopefully, they read some good scripture in there. <laughs> yeah. But man, I, I let you get going, man. I, I appreciate the conversation. But honestly, I might just, if you do have time tomorrow, I want to talk about um, kind of the millennial reign thing because that seems to be a big thing that people are falling into for some reason so i guess so, it just so, depends so, on so your as, time. Far, as far as what as far as what on the millennial reign objection like all the we could list objections to it because i don't believe it like i believe we agree in that that sense like i don't it's, believe a, it's it. a reward you believe it's a reward no 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 no, no. i'm not the rewarding part. I'm talking about people as far as people thinking it already passed. Oh, oh it already happened. Okay. Yeah, like the evidence why it didn't, and it's obvious a lot of it, but you know, I feel like maybe if we do talk about it, 
somebody might, if you do think about uploading it or whatever, somebody might come across it and they might be deceived because even the Bible warns that they were at a, like Paul had to correct churches because they taught that Jesus already came. Like, and it's nothing new. Well, the, yeah, that the resurrection's already passed. Yeah. That's what like, the Sadducees yeah, taught. So. Mm -hmm. And it overthrew the faith. It overthrew their faith, people's faith, because of that. So. And okay, that's what well, we I'll see let you today. Go. I, know, I, I know you got to attend to your family. So sure. uh, stay, stay warm. Appreciate you, man. All right. Yep. Be blessed, man. All right, you too.